A, the center position. Yeah, we've covered a lot of important stuff on Paul's position, but we have yet to do a deep dive on centers. And we're doing a little different today. We're not going to go super deep on like a whole bunch of college prospects or a whole bunch of free agents. We actually have some of our experts giving us their insight, which we can hear and follow up on. Yeah, today it's more about trying to figure out if it is more likely that the answer at center is going to be a veteran or a rookie and not necessarily attaching a name to it. Though some of this will have names attached to it, and we will undoubtedly do that in our analysis. But we can start with Olin Krutz, and if you can draft the center in the first round. People say, well, I don't know if it's ever been done. Has any team ever taken a center and a quarterback in the first round? Right, they're all high quality. The kid from Oregon is a very, very good football player, guys. Man, he plays on a high level. Uh, I know everyone's excited about him. Uh, he could probably make the calls. There's a reason guys get first round grades, right? They're just different than the guys in their class. So, can it be done? It always depends on the player. Has it ever been done? No. Does Does a veteran center give you make you a little more comfortable with his calls, with the way he's directing the line, get everybody moving in the right direction, pointing out the blitz, redirecting blocking schemes? Yes, he does make you a little more comfortable. Uh, he does help out a young quarterback. But but that doesn't mean a young center can't do it if you have veteran guards around him and, and veteran offensive linemen and guys who all been together. Remember, you would put a center in the middle of an offensive line that's all played already, right? And it would Cole Komet, too. Uh, you would have a, a tight end. So you would have a lot of guys who have all played together already. Now, here's the thing is you got a new scheme, right? You got a new offensive coordinator. But a young center, an elite center, uh, uh, Speaks, could do it. Uh, I'm not saying you take a guy in the uh, third round, a guy like me, a bum. You don't take a third round center, but you can't take a first round. I just need a new center. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Layla. See, it, that, it does alleviate some of the concerns. He's saying that you could have a rookie, as, and as long as their strengths are pass protection and identifying coverage, that they could work, especially because you've got veterans around them. So the name that he was alluding to, the Oregon kid, that, that's Jackson Powers Johnson. But then there's another guy... Zach Frazier, have you come across him at all yet in any of your reading? The kid I, from West Virginia? I have come across Zach Frazier. So, I have another guy, it, but it, go ahead. Well, according to some of the stuff that I read, it actually might be a really weird year where there could be two centers drafted in the first round. Man, that's crazy. Because last year my guy was John Michael Schmitz from Minnesota, and he ended up going high second round. Yeah, Giants, right? To the Giants yeah. uh, was the center for the all-rookie team. Um, not a dominant year, but kind of an up and down year, but that's the highest that a center went last year. Jackson powers. Johnson could be in the twenties, could be in the teens. You're saying the Zach Frazier could be in the first round yeah, as well. I was reading more about him and he got, he got a late first round grade from a couple of people. And so we'll, we'll see, and it'll depend on team need. And I'm sure everyone will have it graded differently. They normally do outside of the top 10 or 12 players in the draft. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think about Ryan Poles and Kansas city. He drafted Creed Humphrey in the second round. That's a that's, that's, a, that's a high that's pick a for a premium center. investment in a center. Creed Humphrey was the fifty second pick in the draft, and that was the year after the Tampa Super Bowl, where Mahomes was running for his life and the Chiefs got blown out in the Super Bowl, and mm -hmm. they vowed to never do that again. In terms of they had this asset that they wanted to give five hundred million dollars to, they were going to protect him, and so Creed Humphrey was the big draft asset. They also did Trey Smith in that draft, and then they had uh, Joe Thune, the guard, that they gave $80 million to. Mm -hmm. So all of that happened in one offseason. But Creed Humphrey was the top draft pick of Ryan Poles after that Super Bowl and was a center at 52 overall. Uh, Zach Frazier was at the Senior Bowl but did not practice or play because of injury, but at least he was there. So there were some Bears coaches uh, there um, and can, can check that out, um, have that individual – relationship piece Tanner Bartolini interests me a little bit that's a Wisconsin kid who's played all over the offensive line but was at Wisconsin for a long time and has a lot of nasty to him okay uh, and I, like I, I that. haven't I haven't really read much about him I'll I, be honest Danny I'm not ready to declare which oh, okay. which center uh, I love in the draft okay. ju just yet. Well, because well, we'll get a little closer. And, and as you know, I care deeply about the position, having, <laughs> having played it at a very high level. Um, so, yeah, so, so I'm not ready to declare, but but I'm not as afraid of drafting one as I was even a month ago after uh, talking to some people. All right, well, so I want to play Matt Bowen on the subject, and then there was something that I was reading out of the Senior Bowl that I want to want to throw at you here. So he here's Matt Bowen with Dan and Lawrence on the same question that you asked Olin yesterday. 
rookie center, rookie quarterback, is it doable? I agree 100%. Something that can help you up front, that can make the protection calls for you, right? That can set the protection, that can talk to you in the huddle, that can talk to you on the sidelines. Someone is, who has seen everything. I think it's very important, Dan, to pair a young quarterback who's going to need a lot of time in terms of development and understanding the pro game, especially that first month of the season, to have a veteran in front of him makes a ton of difference. Okay. So, 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 so Bowen more. feels strongly that it needs to be a free agent. Chase, a Dan- Chase Daniel did too. From, remember, from the quarterback perspective, he said mm-hmm. that you would not do rookie quarterback, rookie center. Remember, we talked to him about that yep. uh, tor- towards, towards the end of the year. It's a tough spot for me because I think that Olin, they're all very smart football people, obviously, and Chase played quarterback, so he would have the perspective of like if he'd be comfortable as a mm-hmm. rookie quarterback with a rookie center. But Olin, as the authority on center play in the NFL and all of that, he's like, listen, if you have Nate Davis and Tevin Jenkins right yeah. next to him who can help with the protection calls at the beginning – and you can get an elite prospect there who can develop with the quarterback, he doesn't have any any issue with it, it makes me lean towards not having an issue with it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's where I lean as well. Um, but because it, it, the man played it at a very high level and has, has understood that dynamic. I will say, in reading about John Michael Schmitz and his Giants year, um, there was some talk that he leaned on the guard next to him a little too much, Justin Pugh, and Justin Pugh ended up tipping the snap a lot of times because – he, Schmitz like struggled with either remembering or, or or nailing the snap count at times. So Justin Pugh tipped it, which is a big deal for a defensive line. Well, the other thing too is we have to think about like, are they going for the Super Bowl this year, or are they going to go into the year with high expectations but possible half step back to take three steps forward if they draft a quarterback? Because if they're doing half step back, three steps forward, mm-hmm. then rookie center, rookie quarterback's fine. You know, sure. Then there will be some. Pro- Again, Creed Humphrey had probably 12 to 15 low snaps just in Chiefs playoff games this year. And that's a guy who's been a pro bowler and an all pro. You know, so, I mean, you can, if you've got a special quarterback, Mm -hmm. you can live with occasional mistakes from your center if there is a high ceiling there and they can really grow together. I mean, I, I, I dream of whoever the quarterback is having their Jason Kelsey. I wanted it for fields. They didn't do that and really get him one. And I know that's a very special example, obviously, but yeah, I mean, it, if there's someone out there who's gettable and available, um, I, I'd, I'd be very interested. The problem is that the number one guy, Connor Williams, is coming off a big injury with the Dolphins. Tore his ACL in December. Yes, and I, I want to want to get to that in just in just one second. But one because we're going to do the veterans here in just a second. But one more thing on the rookies. Mm-hmm. So Jim Nagy, he's the executive director of the Senior Bowl. Yeah, he was an NFL executive. He said talking to NFL scouts since the Senior Bowl consensus opinion is the two position groups that are deeper than what the league thought prior to mobile cornerback and center. It's interesting. So I wonder in that scenario, and he says that's good news for teams with needs at both those positions. He mentions, of course, Jackson powers, John uh, Johnson, and then a corner from Toledo, uh, Quinion Mitchell, who stole first round headlines, but he says, but there are a bunch of guys at both spots that boosted their draft stock. So I wonder if Ryan Poles looks at that and says, I don't need a first round center, but I do need a to get a second round pick back. I drafted Creed Humphrey in the second round. Mm-hmm. I found Braxton Jones in the fifth. This is a good center class. It's not typically a position that goes in the first round, but when I, that 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 pick and it would be it would be a cruel thing to never give Justin Fields a good center and then give it right away. I, well, it, and maybe trade Justin Fields for that for a draft pick that you use on a center to give to Caleb Williams. That makes me think that that is maybe the path that this is going to go down. That it's going to be he's not going to trade back into the first round or give up crazy assets for it. Mm-hmm. But if he's going to get a second round pick from Atlanta or Pittsburgh or Vegas, if you, people believe what Luke Getzey is saying or all that stuff that he will use that pick Maybe. on the center for Caleb Williams. The trade down from nine really interests me these days because the wide receivers, the best three wide receivers are likely to be gone by nine and going for Keon Coleman, who I like a lot, or whoever your next wide receiver would be at nine might be a reach. I could see the trade down to like 14. Eight, like if you can get a couple of picks, yeah, you know, and you can add a pick that way if you trade down. 
I mean, maybe you can you can if there's if there's somebody super desirable there. If somebody wants to jump up and get a quarterback, quarterback, I'm looking at you, Raiders and JJ McCarthy. Maybe you can trade down, and then you can get that second round pick that way if you don't get it for Fields. Okay, that makes sense. I, I think that's it's absolutely right. Um, there is a those are the rookies. Yeah. Now here's Olin on some of the options in the draft. Yes, but also free agency at center. Well, I, obviously, I've seen some film on the Oregon kid, and, and I got to look look for his name, Jackson Powers. But um, he's very good, right? He he is a, he's a very good center. He's athletic. He gets on a second level. He makes game changing blocks. He can handle himself at the pivot. By that I mean he can handle himself in the middle against big nose guards. He doesn't get pushed back. Uh, uh, he keeps the pocket clean for the quarterback. I really really like his game. I can't say I've looked at a ton of guys. I know Brian Allen, a guy I know well. Uh, the, the Rams just released him. I know the um, the Chicago Bears offered him a contract a few years back. Ryan Pose did and wanted him here. Uh, he's had some injury issues. You'd off, obviously have to put some kind of protection for the team in there uh, for his injuries. He's a good center when healthy. If he can get himself moving in the right direction, he would be the exact kind of guy in Coach Morgan's scheme, and that's why they went after him. With his athleticism, uh, with the way he can point out calls, and he is a veteran, he's the kind of guy you want. The problem is, I know there's a guy from the Miami Dolphins also. The problem is a lot of these guys coming in with injuries, right? Coming off of injuries. Can they stay healthy? Uh, can you take a good young center to learn from them? And, and, and he's your valuable backup. You just never, never know uh, when you're looking at these guys. But I, I got to be honest with you. When you're talking about the draft, when you talk about free agency, it reminds me of my fisheries one-on-one course in college. A lot more than I bargained for when you look at all the information, so I don't do it. Oh, okay. So, no, that, that works. Sorry about fisheries, man. That must have Man, you sounds... didn't know Mollus had so many names. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about Connor Williams, who had the yeah. torn ACL in week 14. That's the Dolphins yep. guy. Any of these mm-hmm. other guys? Andre James, the former Raider. Lloyd Cushenberry mm-hmm. of the Broncos. Aaron Brewer of the Titans. Like any... the Aaron Brewer is a good football player. I, I like Aaron Brewer. I've watched some of his film. I think he would match in Coach Morgan's scheme. He's a name to look for. He's blocked in this outside zone down there at Tennessee for a while. He does a nice job reaching guys. He's the kind of guy that you think Coach Morgan, with their outside zone scheme, he's the kind of guy to go after. Really like his game. I think he's a good football player. He's a good young center, and he'd be matched with Nate Davis again. I think they know each other. So Aaron Brewer, if, if I think if they'd go after a veteran uh, NFL free agent center, I think he'd probably be the guy. Good stuff there. Aaron Brewer, Aaron Brewer was undrafted in 2020 and worked his way up as an interior lineman to the eventual starting center for the Tennessee Titans. Um, which the, Bear, is, the Bears also hired Jason Hodling as their assistant offensive line coach from the Titans. Well, that's great. And Nate Davis is obviously already here, as, uh-huh. o- as Olin mentioned. So His it, uh, nickname's Haas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that, that's 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 vital because then you can actually scout a guy because right. So they, if they bring him in, uh-huh. they have a coach on staff who worked with him as he's risen up through the NFL. In searching some stuff for Aaron Brewer, the Titans center today, I found a Titans blog. It's been a tough year for Aaron Brewer. Oh, mm-hmm. it's from December. It includes this: uh, Aaron Brewer leads the league in pressures allowed. And tied for second most sacks among all centers. Now, that's obviously PFF grades, and we know what J.J. Watt thinks about that. But anyway, if you've got the assistant offensive line coach from Tennessee and you've got Nate Davis, they could tell fact from fiction on some of the grades there because obviously on an offensive line, it's contingent on all sorts of things. Yeah, also, right, maybe better in a zone blocking scheme. Um, 500-plus snaps, three consecutive years. Aaron Brewer played guard Mm -hmm. and then has transitioned more to center. So he would fit the idea of positional versatility, even though you are prioritizing center, but he has been a center. So I think that that name that, that you were running down the list. So you you gave the name, but Olin with the endorsement, I, I do think it makes sense if they go the veteran route more so than going, Hey, Connor Williams, you're a guy who maybe is more highly regarded and we should consider it, but you ruptured your ACL in December. Is he going to be ready for September one? I, I don't know. You know, like that's a, that's a pretty that, that's a, that, a big, big investment on an injured vet. Right. And then you're run, 
Tevin Jenkins has injury problems. Yeah. Nate Davis had and availability. You know, you, and you don't want to be rotating. Like, they need two guys who can play the position because they're getting rid of both Lucas Patrick and Cody Whitehair. Yeah. And I assume they're going to get rid of uh, Feeney, right? Dan Feeney uh, as well. So that's that's your three at this point. Unless Doug Kramer, with all his grody uh, delivered bears, is going to be somebody they consider. And hell, maybe it is the former Illinois center. But they'll need to get a couple. But you don't want to. I don't think you want to do something with that, with Connor Williams when you're not positive he's going to be your guy from day one at training camp. Because that whoever it is needs to be the guy with your rookie if that's what you do from day one at training camp. Yeah, it'll be. It's an interesting thing though, right? Because Connor Williams, I think twenty is he twenty seven. Um, but Matt Bowen at twenty six. Uh, if they say okay, whatever problems with training camp or first six games or whatever, we're in this for the next five years with the guy, and he's clearly the best person to pair with Caleb Williams. I don't think that they'll care about the first six games if they're building this thing, you know, with a rookie quarterback for the next decade because Matt Bowen says Connor Williams, his top guy at the position. Connor Williams from Miami. Now, look, I dropped him down. He's only 27 years old. I dropped him down to number 43, and the reason is he had an ACL injury in December. Okay, so... Anytime we're looking at a player, you know, one thing you have to look at is age and injuries, obviously. But when did the injury occur, right? So someone like Connor Williams, you have to account for he's not going to be ready for mini camp, not going to be ready for OTAs. When is he probably going to be ready for training camp? But as we've discussed before with a knee injury, look, it's much different, uh, Lawrence, if we're talking about a wide receiver defensive back, right? We're talking about an interior offensive lineman. But again, wh what are his traits? He's someone that is excellent in, his, in space. He's more of a positional blocker. But especially when he climbs to the second level, he's very good. So how does a knee impact him? But again, if you're the Bears, you might get a discount on him because of that injury. When this guy is healthy, he's a pretty good football player. And, and that's, you know, there's a reason free agency is before the draft, right? Because you're going to find guys who are pro-ready, who have pro-tape, have a ton of reps and a ton of experience that you can put into your system right away and you know they can play at a high level. With where a young player, we see it all the time. It takes time to develop. Look at Tyreek Stevenson this year. Look at the first half of the season, the game tape versus the second half of the season. Much different player in the second half. What you expect, that gradual, that gradual development. But you need that development, especially at center on day one. So it, it's it's good stuff. I don't know. It's a, they're, they're split, Matt. Right, Matt Bowen seems to be veteran, and mm -hmm. and, and Olin seems to be draft. Yeah, it's interesting. I, absolutely. Um, you know, it's interesting because I don't think you need to get a discount in terms of free agency if you're the Bears. I mean, I guess you could want one, but you're what second? You're third in cap space, and the cap's also going up. Yeah, but you ca cap goes up every year. You mm -hmm. you always want a discount if you can get it. You, no matter how much money you have, right? You, Reinsdorf's looking for a subsidy for a stadium. It doesn't, doesn't matter how much money you have, you 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 know you want cheap. So yeah, ma ma but it's it's not a good free agent class for center. No, and it, it is and not. Like th this is what I come back to. It's not a good free agent class for center, and it is a good draft for center. So it's much more likely to me that Ryan Poles, who has had success in hitting on a center for a highly coveted, very valuable player. Mm -hmm. If he trusted Mahomes to do it, why wouldn't he trust it for Caleb Williams? I, I, I think he's going to find his guy. And if it is Jackson Powers Johnson, he'll find a way. Maybe it's your guy, Zach Frazier. Maybe it's the, the guy I mentioned from uh, Wisconsin, Tanner Bartolini. There's, there's others. The, the kid from Georgia, Cedric Van Pran, was number one going into the season, and he's now dropped to three or four, depending on the rankings. But... I, I think your instinct is right on on polls that he's going to find a guy because he's going to want to pair Caleb with his dude from day one of camp. Like, let's learn together. Let's connect. Let's let's make it happen because they got to be lockstep. Yeah, but I don't. It's hard for me to imagine it being in the first round. Yeah, me too. I think, but, I think so. so, I, so I think, could, I think, could even be round three. I mean, hell, he he drafted Braxton Braxton in Jones in the fifth and and plugged him in. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, he won a battle, but he loved him. Like, he 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 thinks he knows linemen, and this is a key spot he's and a got key a, moment. He's got a pretty good track record for it. Darnell Wright is a hell of a pick. Darnell Wright's a hell of a pick. Braxton Jones is a hell of a pick. Found a home for Tevin Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Creed Humphrey. Trey Smith. He's, he's got he's got a, 
Now, I know Brett Veach gets credit for that, and it's tough to know exactly, but those are draft picks, and he was the director of college scouting, and he was a former offensive lineman, and he was credited publicly with having influence in those picks. Like He's got a pretty impressive draft track record with offensive linemen in the NFL at two stops. I think he's going to do it with either a second-round pick they acquire or maybe a third. Find find a guy and and plug him in. Okay. Well, so then down the road, we're going to have to do – a deeper uh, center dive. On, on just rookie prospects at the center position mm-hmm. that don't include the name Powers Johnson because they're not they don't have a pick in his range right. and it seems very unlikely that that's going to happen. So everyone's going to say that name. Oh, I, I'd be great. It'd be great. It'd be great. It'd be great. Whew. But can you imagine the excitement for the listeners right now, knowing that they're going to get a deeper dive down the center? Prospect this is why list. Pole's position is so popular. I mean, my I'm, God. I'm curious to see where USC center falls in draft oh, boards. Like, you know, if that's a guy that that Caleb Williams might like, you may be able to get him later, and you can maybe skip a step in terms of the acclimation process. That's a good point. And, and they do run a relatively pro style, as I learned from our guy Chase Daniels film breakdown of Caleb Williams last night, which is mm-hmm. on YouTube. But yeah, they, they run a pro style, so maybe there's a little less of a you know a shorter learning curve there for the USC center and Caleb Williams. That's interesting. I have not seen um that particular uh, position. Dedic, Dedic, D E D I C H. Yeah, I honestly do not know. Yeah, I, you don't see a lot of botch snaps on his uh, highlight reels. Uh, just, <laughs> There's not a lot of oh, a snap over his head that makes him, you know an improv move there. You know, yeah, uh, he's listed at uh, number 495 uh, from NFLDraftBuzz.com. Caleb Williams, number two, by the way. I have to assume that Marvin Harrison Jr. is number one. I, I would assume. so. I'm looking at the list of USC prospects. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I would assume so. Okay. Well, that was uh, that was productive. I thought so. All right. The USC connection is interesting to think about. We'll get there when we go to the draft wide receivers. Jerry Rice's kid, Brendan Rice. You know, it's a, he's number 67. Well, but. yeah, USC guy doesn't sound very good, though. We all learn together in this segment. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> 495, you said? That's for the center. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got 